بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم پاکستان ویل ان دا لاسٹ سیشن وی ٹاک اباؤٹ دی انٹرفیس آف گورنمنٹ ود دا کارپوریٹ سیکٹر ٹوڈے وی گوئنگ ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ دا رولز آف گورنمنٹ ان دی ان دی اکانومی ان دی اکانومی دا گورنمنٹ ہیز دا موسٹ پرومننٹ رول بیکاز اٹ از دا بگسٹ ٹیک ہولڈر ان دی اکانومی اینڈ از ناٹ اونلی دا کیٹلائزر آف دی اکانومی بٹ از آلسو دا کسٹوڈین آف دی اکانومی اینڈ ود آؤٹ دا گورنمنٹ پلیئنگ اٹس کرٹیکلی افیکٹو رول ان دا اکانومی آل آف دا بزنسز ووڈ ٹوینٹ ٹو Uh, just dwindle or tend to eradicate. Therefore, it is extremely important that the role of the government is such that it uh, tends to uh, facilitate uh, the rollover and the growth of the economy. Now, what we've been seeing in Pakistan uh, since the past many years that it has been a roller coaster ride for Pakistan, uh, whereby uh, sometimes the economy is going up, sometimes they're going down, sometimes uh, we are going out and asking for loans so that uh, we can basically manage Uh, the imbalance uh, in the foreign exchange and we tend to take more loans and therefore we get more indebted and therefore uh, we have a crisis upon a crisis situation. So maybe what we see is that the government is not uh, adequately or properly playing its role uh, in the economy of Pakistan. Now, the most important thing is, is that it has a regulatory role and when we are looking at the uh, regulatory role, Uh, the determination of conditions under which persons or corporations may enter certain lines of business. So again, the government is acting as a facilitator, is regulating how people can come into uh, a particular sector uh, so that it does not become oversaturated or it plunges into darkness. Uh, the government will regulate or assist the conduct uh, of various ventures. So again, uh, it can promote certain ventures uh, so, such as uh, the sugar cane uh, or the, the sugar mills industry or the power sector. or the electronic cars market uh, through uh, various vessels and through various instruments. Uh, public control may extend to the results uh, of business operations. So again, uh, the government can tend to facilitate, for example, when we're talking about media, it is facilitating it by providing uh, different advertisements to the media, by providing different research studies to the media. Uh, therefore, the media is getting uh, a lot of public sector payments uh, based upon that. So therefore, we see that it can churn the whole market altogether. The government may control the relationship between various segments of the economy. So again, the government can create a matrix whereby it can ensure that both the front end and back end relationships and networks are created for any particular economy so that there can be optimization, so that there can be efficiency, so that there can be effectiveness uh, within different organizations of the economy. The government may put in place legally constituted regulatory bodies, just like for example, the Securities Exchange Commission of Pakistan, the State Bank of Pakistan, uh, the Federal Bureau, Uh, of revenue, uh, the, uh, the Pakistan National Accreditation Council, and many more uh, which are over there, uh, they all will be a part uh, of the government. And through those different regulatory bodies, the government will ensure uh, that business is being done in the right way uh, by the business community. Then we also see that it can have direct controls and indirect controls. Uh, direct controls are more drastic. Uh, in their overall effect and impact, for example, industrial licensing. So uh, the government can say that uh, to set up a new sugar mold, you have to take a license. To set up a power plant, you have to license. To set up or to do mineral extraction, you have to have a license. Through, so through licensing, it can control and regulate the, the market. And then it can also do it through price and distribution controls, just like we see uh, that we have Joma bazaars in Pakistan and that uh, all the time uh, the, the government uh, employees and officials uh, are going for surprise inspections to see Uh, that what are the prices and uh, the distribution method methodologies for the very basic necessities uh, of the common man also. And there can be indirect controls also. Indirect controls are usually exercised through various fiscal and monetary incentives and disincentives. One of the most um, uh, easy ways to do it is a high import duty. Uh, so right now we have very high import duties for uh, smart mobile phones. We can also have them for luxury cars. Uh, we can have them for luxury products and things like that. So that the government not only tends to Uh, generate a lot of revenue for itself, but it also tends to discourage the uh, import of such uh, high value added items because uh, definitely it depletes the foreign reserves uh, of the government and of the country, which then have to be supplemented through loans and, and other uh, support packages, which in the long run can be very expensive. So that is what we have to look at. Now, it does have a, a promotional role also in developed countries instead of regulating government assists in industrial labor, agriculture, and consumer interest. In, in the developing countries, the promotional role of the government assumes special significance due to low infrastructure. So uh, again, countries like Africa, uh, where we have the different African countries, uh, you can see that the, uh, the role of the government is uh, basically to overcome uh, the various shortcomings which exist within infrastructure. And similarly, also in Pakistan, uh, because we have an agrarian 
uh, economy and a very rural background. So they uh, again uh, those areas need to be promoted, need to be developed and based upon that new economic activity uh, can be generated which we are seeing in Gwadar actually because through that port uh, this whole area is now uh, sprawling into uh, a commercial zone altogether and, and that is a very prime example of the promotional role. Uh, the state assumes direct responsibility to build up and strengthen the necessary development of infrastructure. So again, it's the responsibility of the state as you can see right now, uh, motorways are being made, uh, different, um, different economic zones are being created. So uh, Gwadar port is being created, new airports are being developed. So all of this happening together, farm to market roads are being developed. So all of this is the direct responsibility of the government to ensure that it can promote and facilitate the trade taking place and also the, the surplus items can be taken to the uh, Karachi or Gwadar port from where they can be exported at a premium uh, and also generate a lot of foreign exchange uh, for Pakistan. The promotional role of the state also encompasses the provision of various fiscal, monetary and other incentives. So that is what we see uh, that uh, post budget we see fiscal and monetary policies basically emerging seeing uh, that how uh, things are being regulated and controlled and that is again a very important responsibility of the government. Now, uh, what we see is that usually in the entrepreneurial role of the government, uh, national emergency causes an increase in the state activity such as the COVID-19 scenario. So right now what we are doing is, is that in the COVID-19 scenario, how is the government coping with it? How is the government overcoming uh, the adversaries and the shortcomings? All of that is coming into place. Uh, major economic dis uh, dislocations result in the need of the government. For example, when we are creating dams and things like that, major dislocation taking place. In the Gwadar port also, uh, we see there was uh, dislocation and, and things like that. In disasters and depression, government has its own responsibility of the industry. So naturally, uh, the 2005 earthquake, the 2010 floods and other things. And now we have uh, this COVID-19, which is uh, a stark reality uh, right in front of our face. So the government has to play that role so that different industries and different businesses do not close. They can sustain themselves and then they can move forward uh, in a better way in the post-COVID-19 uh, scenario. The need for the service of private undertakings, uh, also wastage of natural resources, that is when the government tends to click in to ensure that natural resources are not being depleted and also failure of private enterprise in case it is a monopoly. So the government not only tends to facilitate but also tends to block sometimes when the private sector are creating monopolies or they are creating cartels because through cartelization uh, there is no competition and that can in the long run uh, have a very negative impact on the economy as a whole. So that is what the government has to ensure and protect the economy, the stakeholders, the people and overall the nation. Uh, so again, in the context of business, uh, many uh, steps are undertaken and uh, based upon those different steps, we see that the government plays uh, a positive role whereby the economy as a whole and also in segments uh, is facilitated to move forward. And besides that, what we see is, is that through the provision of infrastructure and the provision of different resources and incentives, the government tends to spark and ignite business uh, in different uh, regions and different places and sometimes across the country just like uh, Kamyab Youth uh, Program right now. So it's all for the youth uh, trying to give them the skills which they would be able to sell uh, for freelancing. So these are the different roles of the government. Thank you so much.